So we have some technical difficulties. So we've done the story now three times, the beginning of it. So we're going to try it one more time. Hopefully the third time in turn. Those shoes. Uh, Mary Beth Bolets and even Bolts. Every time I've said it, a name I don't know. <laughs> three times. And Noah Jones. Those shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Buy those shoes. Buy these shoes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says. And what you need are new boots for winter. So the boys have already answered this question two times, but they're gonna answer it again. Colm, you tell me this time. What does that mean when she says only for needs, not wants? There's, there's, because you um, they just need a little, like they just have a little money, so they need, they just need what they need. I don't know if you could hear him. He says they don't have a lot of extra money, so they have to buy what they need, not what they want, right? They only have enough to buy the things they need to have. Brandon T comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day. Just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Macklin, how hard is it to have everybody else get the thing you want but not you? Super hard. Why? Because I really want that and what does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. Disappointed. Disappointed. What does it make you feel? Disappointed. Ever make you feel left out? Isn't school yeah. all about kind of fitting in sometimes? It's hard when everybody has something and you don't, huh? Yeah. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps my little cousin... Oh wait, he helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro. Like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. Mr. Alfrey's trying to do something nice, right? Yeah. Does it feel nice right now? No. Mm -mm. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at Mr. Alfrey's shoes and laughs. And so do Terrence, Brandon T., and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any dumb shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of extra money set aside. Might be enough. You never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. What do you think that means, Cullum? Yes. Why is Grandma sitting down like that and shaking her head kind of heavy? Because... You think she can buy those shoes? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. It says here, at the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy like this. Do you act like that when you can buy a pair of shoes? No. No, so what do you think? Can she afford those shoes? No. No. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there was a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. 
Around the corner is a third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape. $2.50. Those shoes! My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch, them, hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the sh first shoe, curling my toes. I get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Do they fit? What do you think, Calm? Use your words. Use your words. No. No. Curled his toes. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says. I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyways with my own money and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when my shoes hurt my feet. Limping is when you walk like and you're kind of like this. You know, like when you hurt and you're like walking not the same. At home a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say. Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. <gasps> oh my gosh, I have a prediction of what's gonna happen, but I don't wanna ruin it for you, Colin, but I really hope it happens. Oh, it sounds like it's gonna be a real kind thing. We shop baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes. One last time. Colin, what do you think he's gonna do? It's gonna stretch. You think the shoes are gonna stretch? I don't think you're right. I think it's gonna, they're not gonna fit. What do you think he's gonna do if they don't fit? Gonna give it to him. Why do you think he's gonna give it to him? Because he, um, I don't know. Okay, let's see. See if they stretch or if he has to give them away. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Do they fit? Use your words. No. <laughs> Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at Mr. Alfrey's shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots! New black boots that no kids have ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, Thanks. 
I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. Calm. You like that book? Use your words. <laughs> yes or no? Yes? What was your favorite part? You don't know? My favorite part, obviously, is when he gives the shoes to Antonio. I think that's real cool. I also thought it was cool that he was responsible enough and he paid for them with his own money. That's pretty cool, too. All right, so this was today's read aloud. Those shoes. Tune back into tomorrow. I think I'm going to read this one. I got a few nieces watching my read alouds, and I think they might like this one. Not quite narwhal. So that's what I'm going to read tomorrow. I only have two more books in my stack already, so I'm going to have to pick out some new books. So hopefully you're enjoying our read alouds, and hopefully you'll tune back in. Thanks so much. Happy reading. You want to say happy reading? No? Okay. Happy reading.